This short video presents a decision-making tool designed to assist land managers in the control and prevention of weed infestations. This tool shares some similarities with the holistic management decision-making framework and complements the HM framework nicely. It is offered here to add a greater functionality to the HM decision model, specifically to control weeds and invasive species. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the sources for the information that you are about to see. Most of the schematics that you will see are from two papers that were published in peer-reviewed journals. The first is a paper by Roger Shelley, Tony Sfikar, and Bruce Maxwell, entitled A Theoretical Framework for Developing Successional Weed Management Strategies on Rangeland. This article was published in Weed Technology in 1996. The second is an article written by Tony Sfikar entitled Applying Ecological Principles to Wildland Weed Management, published in the Journal of Weed Science in 2003. The general model for successional management is presented here. This model is defined by three primary categories, design disturbance, controlled species performance, and controlled colonization. As we can see in this schematic, the goal is to move the plant community from an undesired state to a desired state. This is a good opportunity to take a look at the future resource-based description in your holistic goal. Does it describe plant communities at the level of detail you require to plan effectively? If not, you may want to modify your holistic goal to provide the specificity you require as you work with this model. Let's take a look at the actual decision model. This model is designed to use a combination of biological monitoring data and treatments from one of the three categories. On the left-hand side in the gray box, the manager can fill in biological monitoring data that describes the composition, density, and frequency of the plant community prior to weed management. You will notice that many of the tools offered within these three categories correspond nicely to the tools in the holistic management framework – fire, technology, grazing, and animal impact, for example. The tools offered in this successional management model are not comprehensive, but they do provide a solid foundation for brainstorming and experimentation. It is important that you understand the three basic categories of successional management. To further elaborate, let me read some excerpts from the paper A Theoretical Framework for Developing Successional Weed Management Strategies on Rangeland. The authors write, Managing succession requires knowledge of three components corresponding to the three general causes of succession, disturbance, colonization, and species performance. Within the limits of our knowledge about the conditions, mechanisms, and processes controlling plant community dynamics, these three components can be modified to allow predictable successional transitions. We can design the disturbance regime and attempt to control colonization and species performance through management. Successional management must be viewed as an ongoing process moving from one successional component to the next, or repeating a single component through time. This model is driven by both naturally occurring and human-induced processes, and thus is robust enough to allow incorporation of virtually any management decision. The first category, design disturbance. Disturbance plays a role in initiating and altering successional pathways. Natural disturbances, such as landslides, fire, and severe climatic conditions initiate, retard, or accelerate succession, or alter successional pathways. Theories are emerging that suggest large-scale disturbance and patch dynamics contribute to the invasion of intact or pristine plant communities by rangeland weeds. For example, Tyser and Key found that spotted knapweed was capable of expanding into grassland communities in Glacier National Park. Small patch disturbances created by wildlife and roadside activity allowed individual spotted knapweed plants to establish. We believe the aggressive characteristics of many rangeland weeds allow maintenance of small populations. Subsequent large-scale disturbances, such as fire or drought, cause safe site openings and reduce the competitive ability of the perennial species, which favors large-scale invasions by weeds. Succession may be permanently altered. In the case of spotted knapweed, large-scale disturbance may not be necessary for invasions. Patch disturbances, such as roadsides, may be sufficient to initiate invasions. Design disturbances include activities 
that are initiated to create or eliminate site availability and are aimed at initiating and controlling succession. Weed management strategies have included design disturbance, such as cultivation, burning, and herbicide applications for decades. However, in successional management, design disturbance is used to alter successional trajectories and to minimize the need for continuous high-energy inputs. The utility of any specific design disturbance in successional weed management will depend on the range site, plant community type, invading weed species, site history, season, climate, and the management goals. The next category is controlled colonization. Controlled colonization is the intentional alteration of availability and establishment of various plant species. Colonization may be influenced in a positive or negative manner depending on the species and successional goals. Controlled colonization efforts are directed towards influencing seed banks, propagule pools, and regulation of safe sites for germination and establishment of desired species. Weed seed banks can be depleted through attrition if seed production is prevented or significantly reduced. Olson and others found that the number of spotted knapweed seeds in the soil was reduced after three years of intensive sheep grazing, resulting in decreased weed density. In another example, two seed feeding flies, Europhora affinis and Europhora quadrifasciata, have been shown to reduce spotted knapweed seed output by up to 80%. Weed seed dispersal can also be limited by not driving vehicles through weed infested areas when seeds are present, not grazing livestock in weed infested areas during flowering and seeding or holding animals for 14 days before moving to uninfested areas and using hay free of weed seeds. It is possible that introducing seeds of desirable species in small amounts each fall or winter to mimic natural seeding may allow colonization by increasing the probability that seeds are available during favorable environmental conditions. Since weed seeds can be dispersed by livestock and hay, Using livestock to introduce seeds of desirable species in favorable patches may be feasible and offers a low input method for controlling colonization. Conceivably, managers could add seeds of desirable species into hay during fall and winter feeding periods to be spread throughout a pasture. In addition, hoof action by livestock may create safe sites, enhancing seedling establishment. Controlled colonization may include introduction of certain less desirable but ephemeral species to facilitate establishment of desirable species by creating safe sites for germination and seedling survival. The third category is controlled species performance. Controlled species performance involves manipulating the relative growth and reproduction of plant species in an attempt to shift community dynamics in a desirable direction. Biological and chemical weed control, grazing, plant and plant part removal, altering resource availability, and competitive plantings are techniques used to create differential species performance. A classic example of biological control is provided by Huffaker. In many cases of the United States, St. John's wort has been effectively controlled by two species of beetles, Chrysolina quadrihemina and Chrysolina hyperisi. Many herbicides selectively control weeds. In both cases, plant communities can be shifted toward desirable species, providing propagules are present and establishment occurs. Most animals have preferences for certain forages. Selective grazing by herbivores can shift the competitive balance of plant communities. For example, in some situations, leafy spurge can be controlled by sheep or goat grazing. Appropriate grazing by animals preferring weeds can shift the plant community toward more desired grasses. On the other hand, cattle grazing can selectively reduce grass competitiveness, shifting the community in favor of weeds. As we think about successional species management and weed control, let's put this in the context of some insights from Alan Savory's book, Holistic Management, A New Framework for Decision Making. If you wish to favor a species, a, a game animal, a plant, a reptile, an insect, or a bird, then you must direct the successional movement of the community toward the optimum environment for that species, not by automatically intervening with some technological tool, but by applying whatever tools produce an environment in which that species thrives. <laughs> 